all the time. Uh, this month we are looking, as you heard in the announcement, into a new teaching series which is entitled The Prophetic Guide in the End Times. That is what we're going to look into, what is being called in the Bible prophecy, the last day or in the end of time. When we talk of kingdom eschatology, we are referring to the events that are going to lead to the coming, the second coming of Jesus Christ. When we talk of kingdom eschatology, we are talking about the events that are going to help us to understand things that are going to happen prelude to coming of Jesus Christ. We need to understand that Jesus Christ, they prophesy about him in his first coming. And when the prophecy came, everything that was spoken about Jesus coming had been literally fulfilled. And so now we are in the second part for his coming and what are those events which are going to happen for us to be prepared for the coming of Jesus Christ. We in the kingdom, we have the word of God, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, that we understand what is going on in the world, because the prophetic scripture gives us an understanding into the times. But people who are not in the kingdom, they are not in the light, when they look at the events going on in the world, they become depressed, they become oppressed, because they don't have the prophetic scripture to tell them. So as we go into the prophetic scripture in the end time, we are going to see that there are going to be two classes of people, light and darkness, and they are going to go up simultaneously. While the light will be brighter, the darkness will become more darker. So when you look into the scripture, let's go to the Bible. In Matthew chapter 13, <clears throat> verse 36, Jesus explained about the parable of the tear. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. The disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the wheat of the field. He answered them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. Matthew 13, 36, now 37. The field is the world and the good seed these are the children of the kingdom, and the weed are the children of the evil one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angel. As therefore the wheat are gathered up and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angel, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things 
that has caused stumbling and those who do iniquity and will cast them into the furnace of fire, then there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ear to hear, let him hear. Two group of people. You know, this pandemic has come. Those, when a pandemic come, like the thing that are going on in the world, a true citizen of God is to show how powerful your kingdom is. We have been blessed in this ministry, in this pandemic. Uh, we have given more than ever in times when the things were fine. Because we are in the world, but not of the world. So a pandemic comes to prove which foundation are you standing on. If you hear now and you are expecting pandemic and you don't have a firm foundation, you will cry like the people of the world. Meanwhile, in the kingdom, pandemic is to show us to grow lighter. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 61. <clears throat> So what I'm explaining now, there will be two sets of people, light and darkness. The light will grow lighter, the darkness will become more darker. darker. Amen? Amen? Let's look at Isaiah chapter 60, sorry, verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the Yahweh's glory has risen on you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise on you, and his glory shall be seen on you. Nation will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Why there is darkness in the world, just as if you read the book of Exodus chapter 7, it talked about two periods of time where there was darkness in Egypt, but at Goshen, there was light. Egypt represents the world. Why the people in Egypt were calamity with darkness, in Goshen, people were having light. So what is it explaining to us is that, that is why we need to give heed to the prophetic scripture. Because the Bible says, in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, the sacred things belong to the Lord our God, but those things that are revealed to us, they belong to us and to our children, that we may obey the word of this Lord. So, what the scripture is saying that, that, there are secret things, and those secret things, they are things which God has reserved for himself. But there are things which God has revealed to us, and he revealed them to us so that we may obey them. If God reveals you something and you didn't do, if you are crying to God to show you more, God will not show you because first of all, he first of all revealed you something. I see in my walk with the Lord that when God shows me something, I dip into it and God go deeper. There are many people whose life is just stagnant. God showed you something, you have not done it, and yet you are praying, God show me more. No, God will not waste his time if he revealed you something and you don't do it. So there are things which are secret. And I want to give an example of the secret thing. Because a lot of prophets have deceived the children of God and even confused them in these last days. For instance, this is what is secret. Go with me to Mark chapter 13. Please, Marius, read for us. In Mark chapter 13, verse 32, start from verse 32. 13, 32. Yes. But, but concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, 
nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. Are you hearing? Mm -hmm. Thank you. It says, but on that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Did you hear that? No one knows. Not even the angel. Not even the Son, Jesus knows. But only the Father. But you have seen sometimes, when I was growing up in 2008, I think in 1988, they said Jesus was coming. People sold their homes, bought things. People were preparing to die. They said Jesus is coming because it was a prophet in America who said the end is coming. Sell your houses. People sold their thing with, waiting at 12 midnight to see that the world will end. And they were shocked before they were come. <laughs> Everything was normal. Because they didn't understand the prophetic scripture. We were sleeping that day. Say, I will not close my eyes. <laughs> because if Jesus come, <laughs> me too, I will not be, I will not go. So we slept the whole day, waiting 12 o'clock midnight. Because they told us, the end is coming, Jesus is coming. And we waited till morning. Why? Because if people would have read the prophetic scripture, they would have known that only the Father knows it. But there are things which are revealed to us. Please read for us Acts chapter 1 verse 11. This one is revealed to us. Acts chapter 1 verse 11. And said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Thank you. So, the angel was speaking to the men of Galilee. He said, why are you standing here looking into the sky? Now he said, this Jesus, not a Jesus, this same Jesus you have seen received from you will in come sky. back in the same way you saw him Go into the sky. So we know that Jesus will come back. That is revealed to us. Now the hour and the time is not prepared. So what do we need to do? We need to be alert. We need to stay awake. Because no one knows the hour nor the time. The scripture says, go with me to Matthew chapter 24 verse 39. What happens in those things? You see, there are many Christians today who are looking for prophecy. I want a good house. I want a good car. I did All the preacher does to them is to only maintain life for now. They don't have a view of the end times of what is going to come. Are you listening? You will read, if you look in the churches today, very few churches talk about eschatology, about what is going on in the end time. And it's the same thing we understand the Bible says, as it was in the days of Lot. And in the day of Noah, people were eating and drinking and giving to marriage. They were building. They were so concerned about material things. And they were prophets deceiving them until the time came. Why? Because this is a subject people don't want to hear. They want to be concerned about the now. My big house, my big car, this, this, and that, 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 that. But they are not giving heed to the prophetic scripture. So what does he say? Please read for us Matthew chapter 24 verse 37. 24, 37. Yes. For as were the days of Noah. Listen. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. For as in those days before yes. the flood. Yes. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one left. Therefore stay awake, 
for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Yes. So every time you hear that the Bible say, watch, stay away, be alert. You don't know. Two people, two men will be at the mill granny. One will be taken and the other left. People will be sleeping. One will be taken and the other left. It's the people who are staying awake, who know, they hear the word, and they hear the Spirit telling you, prepare the way. Because if you are a child of God, you should hear the voice of the Spirit. But if you are not a child of God, you cannot hear. Because the Bible says, before Jesus comes, there will be the revelation of the Antichrist. Go with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Before he comes, that's why when people look into the events of the world today, what are you learning? What are you grappling on the news media, the politics? For me, I'm learning. This is a prelude of what the Bible says about what is going to come in the end time. So for us now, you should be prepared about the end time. You should be prepared. Every church you go, the man of God should be preparing you for the end time. So that you are not like the people of the world, like in the days of Noah and Lot. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. But you find that this is not so much a popular message because Satan, the God of this world, has blinded the minds of the people not to know when the Lord comes. So they will be taken to darkness where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. They say, oh, oh, sorry, I was not informed. What if you acquire all the material things and the car and the houses and you lost all at the end of your life? And you were in church, but you failed to hear the prophetic scripture to warn you that the Lord Jesus is coming back again and to prepare yourself. For his coming. But it's not a popular message. Because people's life is too much materialistic. Which scripture did I say? Second Thessalonians 2. 3. Okay, read. The Antichrist. Before the Antichrist. Read for us. Let no one deceive you in Listen. any way. Yes. For that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first. Mm -hmm. And the man of lawlessness is revealed the son of destruction. Yes. Who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, mm -hmm. so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, yes. proclaiming himself to be God. If you read, look at what the Antichrist is now already close to, because they talk of the Mount of Omar, in, in, because... When the Jews took over, there is what is called the Temple Mount, where the Jews are supposed, first of all, the capital of Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, is supposed to be Jerusalem, not Tel Aviv, and that has been done now. So it's a sign. The next thing is that where the, the, the al Asa Mosque in, in the, the, in, uh, is, is now, is where... The, the Jews are supposed to build the temple, and then when that temple is built, Christ is coming. What is going to happen now, there is going to be a deal between the Jews and the Muslims that, okay, the Jews will able to go out of the West Bank, some part of it, and the Jews will build at that mosque at Mount Omar. And when that is done, Christ is coming back. But the thing is that this Antichrist will be a man that will claim to solve problems between the Jews and the, the world, and everybody will look upon him like a god. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. And he is already at work now. Mm -hmm. If you were listening to the news and seeing what is going on in America and in the entire world, the Antichrist is in the making. So all this thing you see about COVID and all this thing, it is a prelude to the manifestation of the Antichrist. But what are we concerned <coughs> with? We don't want to hear that. You know? We don't want to hear it. We are busy enjoying. Now, the Bible tells us that Paul told us something 
that we should be absolutely concerned about this end time. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 5. Please, Marius, read for us. Listen to this scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Paul gives us the events that are going to happen before we see it. And look for yourself if these are not the things happening. But to understand this, mm -hmm. that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. Yes. For people will be lovers of self, mm -hmm. lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Thank you. Avoid such people. Yeah, I like that translation. It says, Paul makes a statement here that, but know this, in some translation it says, mark this, never has Paul written a scripture that he has emphasized such a thing that note this or mark this. That means this must happen. Is it in your Bible? What does it say? It says in Norwegian. <laughs> yeah, what does it say in Norwegian? Where do you want to start? Today I am. Just the one, first one, the first one, three one. Du skal vite at i de siste dager skal det komme vanskelige tider. You, you understand mm. that you must know that in this last day they will come difficult. He said you must know. <laughs> when they say you must know, that means it is setting. <laughs> Are you getting me? <laughs> so in these last days there will be grief. One translation says grievous times. <laughs> <laughs> That I'd rather say fierce times. <laughs> so when you look at these things now, people are stopping, and what they say is that things will become harder. Mm. The poor will get poorer. Prices will go up. Mm. Somebody is expecting, how is price just going up? <laughs> uh, <laughs> look to the world. Mm. Nothing is coming back as usual. Mm. Are you getting me? So it is a sign of the last days that Grievous times have come, fierce times have come, no way to say vanskily tit, difficult time. You get me? Are coming. So you don't need a prophet to tell you again, you have the word. Difficult times are coming in these last days. Now it gives us a series of blemishes that are going to happen. He says, What? Men will be lovers of self. Lovers of money. And the three things is love of pleasure. These are the three things that is a characteristic of this last day. Say with me, love of self. Love of, self. Love of, money. Love of money. And love of pleasure. Love of pleasure. The root of all problem is the degeneration of human character. And the first is love of self. Love of self is the most in the, the, the root of all divorce and confusion in the home. Love of self. Many Christians have not denied themselves so that Christ can live. So you marry somebody, he's still with himself. He has not denied, he has not died to himself. Because when you die to yourself, it's not about you, it is about Christ. When you die to yourself, the needs of others, they move your need. But when you are not die to yourself and you, you come into a relationship, you say, okay, I have a bill. You say, that's your bill. I have my own bill. So it's partnership. Don't say you are married. Don't say we are living together. Because once you get married, self died. Are you getting me? You are not answering. Self died in that relationship for a new union to come up. But when self has not died, and you are thinking, what can I get? Not what can I give? And you came in and you said, 
Before I came, you had bill. You had debt. You want me to pay your debt. You were alone with your own. <laughs> me to have my own. So, all you are doing is me, me, me. Me, me, me. It's self. Self. And self will lead to competition. Who has that? Who has this? That's not marriage. Oh. It's your convenience. So don't be talking of Christian. Uh, Bible say men should provide for their wife. Wife should provide for... You are talking, you have not even died. Are you getting me? Mm. That's why Jesus said, if any man who come after me must deny himself, yourself is your greatest enemy. And deny yourself means your ego, me, because you died in Christ. It's not your promotion. It's not, that's why I stop putting images on these things like posters, because most of the things Satan has deceived us that I am trying to show something of my self, not Christ in me. If you have not died to yourself, you can't be a true Christian. He said, you must deny yourself and take up your cross and then follow me. You can't follow Christ if you have not denied yourself and take up your cross to follow him. Impossible. Mm. These are the three conditions. If we deny ourselves today, the self say, what I want is not what you want. It's what God wants. Mm -hmm. What I feel is not what you feel. It's what God says. What I think is, is not what you think. It's what God commands. You will see how peace will reign in the home, in our society, and in the world today. But what we see in the world today it's a love of self. I want to be the biggest. Even churches today, I want to have the biggest church. I want to make a name for myself. Myself. So you see in modern sociology today, they teach about self-empowerment. Mm. Self-development. Take care of yourself. Be yourself. So Christian today, even the poor... A poor Christian will never give a penny to the poor. But yet, that's why the Bible says, have a form of godliness but denying the power. Say, go away from such people. They are just religious people. They have the God. They can talk about scripture. They can preach. But your friend needs a help. And he's in need. And you say, don't enter my house. Don't, I will not give you food. I will not do this. What kind of a Christian do you claim to be? Religious people. Pagan Christianity who stands in the pulpit and preaches, but there's no practical reality of what you believe. Your Christianity is dumb. It's foolish for you to come here and preach. If you have this desire, the need of others will pass your own need and you'll be happy. The need of others will move your need and you'll be happy. Of reason, I, I, I'm saying something, but I send money and they, some, to someone, and they, they pass to my mother. My mother, how do you send money to this person? I say, Is it your money? It's my money. Don't tell me who I to send my money. Who told you even to, they, to give you that money? <laughs> because they want to control you. That, okay. So, you see, love of self is our greatest thing. Because you can talk in church. You can preach, but the poor, your own brothers and sisters, cousins are there, but you have the need. You can't help them, but you are praying to God. Who should help them? What Christianity is this we are practicing? See, if Christians will deny themselves, you will see a revolution in the world today. Mm. But instead, it's the state helping the poor, isn't it? It's about the party building, helping the refugee. And we are in church. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. My mercy and grace. You only can save covetousness, but you can't help the poor. Who is now good? They don't believe God, but they're helping the poor. They're helping the sick. But you and I, we come to church every day. Even to help a widow, you cannot. To help an orphan, you cannot. But you're thinking only about my 
Self. 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 And that's why you are never happy. You are never happy. Because as long as you concern about yourself, he you said you have a form of godliness and people only to feed your ego and not happy. Nobody can make you happy until yourself die. Are you getting me? Don't go into a relationship that your spouse is making you happy. No. You will be the most miserable person. You'll be the most miserable person. You have to make yourself happy by dying to yourself. I read, he said, I don't want to go there with me. We're talking about his wife, Jessica. He realized that, ah, I cannot satisfy her. She cannot satisfy me. So they made a deal. I said, that's a Hollywood. They are just playing all the movies, say this power. But he said, they realize that um, my job is not to make you happy. Your job is not to make me happy. Now, these are millionaires. Mm -hmm. They have everything. Swimming poor money. But the self is the problem. Mm -hmm. So, the problem today is the love of self. Number two, the love of money. <laughs> the love of what? Money. money is the root cause of all Evil. When when self becomes money becomes an issue, then then it leads to the love of pleasure. We live in a time where pleasure. Wait, what is it? Pleasure. People are not tired of pleasure. People are getting pleasure until they want to live a life of pleasure. Prayer, you can't pray. Fasting, you cannot fast. No, no, I need pleasure. When the days our parents were growing up. You see how they are powerful. Today, kids cannot do anything. Only pleasure, 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 pleasure. That's why we are having society broken. These are the three powerful things that break society. Love of self, love of money, and love of pleasure. pleasure. So when we see the end coming to it, it is not an, it's not an atomic bomb that will destroy people. Because it is people... Who put the atomic bomb? Mm -hmm. The atomic bomb don't destroy people. Look at this nation that have ammunition. Arsenal. They will build big arsenal. Like North Korea. But yet, their citizens are dying of poverty. Mm -hmm. The president said, you poor have to scale down your food. <laughs> he said, you must eat less. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? <laughs> but they are building what? Atomic bomb. atomic bomb of killing people. Who is the one now? It's not a bomb, it's the people, the character of man. But he himself is eating four meals a day, flying in jet, isn't it? Yes. And his body is like, brrr. he has to lose weight, but he's telling people to eat less. <laughs> That's the world. That's the world. That's the world. So you, you begin to understand that the DJ, and that's why Christ is the only one to end this system. There's no man who will come and help you. No. That's why you have to be in the kingdom. Are you getting me? Yes. There's no leader. Look at the, 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 the summit that took place. Look at all the leaders. They were all sleeping when the meeting was going on. <laughs> and you expect these people to help you? <laughs> they were sleeping. <laughs> At 70 something years old, he can't retain anything in his memory. You know what I'm and you expect these people to come and help you? You'll be delusional. <laughs> are you getting me? Yes. It's no way. So, what are we seeing <coughs> is that <clears throat> corruption. Because of the nature of man, from the sin of man, from Adam, is irreversible, both physical and spiritual. So what is the solution of this corruption? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, all things have passed away. So it is only when you are born again. You are what? Born again. Born again from, sure. your, from the nature that you are in Christ, then you can see the true nature. So you cannot pamper an a, a person who is not born again because his nature is corrupt. You understand that? 
His nature is even when you do anything, do everything, do anything, anything it's just like a, a pop, a, a snake that you say this is a small snake, you are petting the snake. A snake is snake will bite you one day. <laughs> That's his nature. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? Yes. So it has to be born again. again. Then the new nature comes up. Amen. Are you getting me? So that is why God will destroy this entire world to bring up a new system. And we are here to prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go with me to 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 13. Please, Marius, read. Are you getting something? Yes. Mm. 2 Three. Three please. 2 Peter 3.13. Okay. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Yes. Okay, read uh, Revelation chapter 21 verse 5. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy yes. and true. That's it. So there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And God is saying, I will make all things new. That means this present social order is doomed to perish under God's judgment. So everything you are trying to get in the world, love not the world, neither the things of the world. For that which is of the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eye, and the pride of life, they are of the world. And the world is passing away. away. It's only who, who does the will of God. Everything will perish. There will be a new world order. A kingdom of God will be birth. And those of us, you and I, who are citizens of the kingdom, who have heard the message and are doing the thing, we will be partaking in that kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. So, the root is love of self. Not resolve. They have a form of godliness. But there is no proof that they are really Christians. It's just a form. It says... I like your translation. Say, from these people, go away. They will never change. They will keep complaining. Mm -hmm. They will keep nagging. They keep thinking about themselves. There's no way you can help such a person. Mm -hmm. You know why it's so difficult to preach as a pastor in this part of the world in Europe? Because there is so much form of godliness but no power. Why? Because you can preach here and preach here. Materialism has entered the people in such a way that a pastor can even collapse in the pulpit before you know that man is called. You see? So it's exhausting. But back home, a little message, you will see people will respond. Are you getting me? So you need to understand that how should we conduct ourselves? Let me conclude. How should we con conduct ourselves in this present time? Number one, recognize that all these things confirm the reliability of the scripture. All these things we see go to prove the sanctity of scripture. What the word has already written that these things will come to pass. And so we should be prepared. Are you getting me? Personally, we have to deal with the root of self-love. This is the power of godliness. We need to deny ourselves. We need to lose our soul to gain it. Please go with me to Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 and 25. Matthew, please read. Matthew 16, verse 24 and 25. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, 
let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Thank you. You see, when I come here and preach you a message just to make you laugh and happy, I don't deal with your soul. God will, God will ask me, and I have to watch my own self. Are you getting me? Because if I don't, de if I just come here to make you to be happy, you say that was a good sermon, did he? But he never deal with the root of self in you. Are you getting me? Then, then I will give an account. Because self for you and me is a problem. So Jesus is saying, then whoever will deny himself and lose his soul, then he will find life. You see? Man's so extremity and God's opportunity. You begin to understand that tribulation, pressure, can, will turn many to God. Men's heart today are failing. Are you getting me? The, the current situation is that there will be stress. There will be what? Stress. stress is a person. Stress is a situation. People will just be stressed. You know, today people who don't have a long span to, to really bear with one another. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. We cannot bear with one, one another inconvenience. Why? Stress. Is it? Yes. Stress. So, God is saying... All these things will be shaken. That the kingdom of God, which cannot be shaken, will remain. That's when they ask Jesus, what will be the sign of your coming? He says, don't be deceived. Many false prophets will come and deceive many. There will be famine. There will be pestilence. There will be earthquake. Are you getting me? Say so Christians will be persecuted for their belief. And that's what we're saying today. Persecution of those who stand for the truth. But he said all these are bad pains. They are what? Perfect. It means, the, the word bad pains means labor pain. Like a woman who is at labor to give birth. She has to go through the labor pain for the birth to come. Mm -hmm. So, the humanity has to go through the labor pain of suffering so that the birth of the kingdom can come. So once you see all these things happening, it is a proof of the labor pain that is going on in the world. Mm. Because the kingdom cannot come, be birth, except there is all these things happening. You understand? Yes. Yes. It cannot come. So the Bible says, when you see all these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Matthew, Luke chapter 21, verse 31. Please read for us. When you see all this, that's why I'm telling you the kingdom is the only solution. If you don't make the kingdom your priority in life, you and I are building on sand. Please read. So also, mm -hmm. when you see these things taking place, yeah. You know that the kingdom of God is near. That's it. The kingdom of God is near. Be ready. There will be end time pressures. So brothers and sisters. What do we have to do? There is limitless opportunity for us to do good in the world today. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 1 verse 27. It says true religion is what? Please read. True religion. If you want to say you are religious, here is your religion. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this. Yes. To visit orphans and widows in their affliction mm -hmm. and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Now your religion, if you are religious, that is the practice of religion. Is to visit the what? The orphans and the widows. 
If you are in this church, in this ministry, you are not helping no orphan, no widow. Your religion is just a religion by word. No. A religion of word. You see? That's true religion. But some of us today, it's never enough. And that's why we are not happy. Because all of us in this church, we have more than enough. If you look at the entire world today, more than enough. But self, you see, so my dear brothers and sisters, what is the ultimate of God's purpose? Let's go to Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14. Please, Marius, read. Titus chapter 2, what is God's ultimate purpose? For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, mm -hmm. training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passion, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. That's it. Those who are zealous for good work. God is looking for people who are zealous for what are the good work. The good work, preaching the gospel, <coughs> helping the weak, <coughs> the orphans, the widows, the fatherless. That's a good work. You are not just saved by faith alone. Faith without a corresponding action is futile. You can talk of your faith, but if there are no good works in your faith. You know, people will know you of your good work that you never know them. The good you left, when you, you are left, you leave the earth today, you are dead. Somebody that never knew you will hear that, oh, this man is dead, this woman is dead. Oh, they say, wow, oh, that man helped me. This person did something for me. But some people, when they die, nobody will even know that they ever existed. <laughs> even all the gold, the silver, the car they have, they will not even know that it was there. All they left was on the earth here. It was just left here. They never sent anything to heaven to help the poor. Because when you give to the poor and the widow, you are storing up treasures in heaven, which mud and rust cannot eat and destroy. But when it's only concerned about here, when you die, everything is vanishing. You get me? You see? So everything you work for is gone. That's why I told you, one of the greatest things in this ministry is the outreach ministry. Helping the poor. Helping the weak. Not only helping them with the little, but sharing the gospel to them for the salvation of their soul. Because there's another way the world does it, that they give you food, they give you shelter, but they don't help you to get the word of God into your soul so that you can know Christ. But we don't know the power of the gospel and know the power that we can use our influence with the little we have and share the gospel and help those people we should be doing it because once you start to do that you will be the most joyful person i tell you you are not seeing joy start to help you have not experience joy that will come upon you like this you are you just be walking even barefoot you are just happy you are just happy. Just start to help people. The greatest investment you and I can do is not investing in the stock market or the bond market or buy gold or silver. These are things. The greatest investment is investing in the life of people because people are the most valuable asset. Not in things, but in people. Are you getting me? Mm. 
Yeah. Because you will not know somebody's influence when the person is not there. You will know how important this person was in your life. But when somebody has not impacted your life, in fact, you even prefer that they go away out of your presence. Are you getting this? It's when the person is not, you will know how great impact this person was. So invest in people in these last days. Mm -hmm. That's why we are talking of this prosperity with a, with a purpose seminar. It's something for you to come. Understand the world's point of view. Understand the kingdom point of view. So that you have a balanced view. Good brother Maros will show an introduction into the dynamics of the financial market. From the world point of view and also kingdom. That will help us to position on ourselves. That's why we are not doing it just for, for any sake. Because one of the things is the love of money. And we need to understand because money is the God of this world. You see? So, as we, as I conclude, in these last days, fierce times are coming on the earth. Now, for you in the kingdom, you are of the world and not of the world. When you have helped the weak, the poor, when you are in need, God will see to you. Are you getting me? Yes. It's an insurance that God will see to you. When you are afflicted and you help the poor, God will de deliver you from the bed of languishing. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's your security, which is more than the security of this world can give. Because when God will say, listen to Job, God will say, this one, he was not concerned about himself. Satan, you cannot kill him. You think that evil spirit does not exist? Last night I was sleeping. I just saw somebody surely enter my room, open the door like this. I saw it. Because I saw it. I, I turned. Evil exists. Evil exists. So you need to understand to align yourself with the kingdom which cannot be shaken. And the kingdom is practical righteousness. Helping the poor. Helping the weak. And God will begin to reveal you more things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. If we just come to church and just get a good time and sing a good choir and do good things, but we are not creating no impact there, then what is the use? The people will say, why do those people keep going to that building? Why are they going there to that church place? It's not touching us. But when we go out, even in this city, you and I, this December, we can go to the Mottak. We can buy food for Christmas season. We, you have car. We can go there and help the people and preach them the gospel. So we're not talking about helping people far away. We can do it here. What are we couple just taking some time visiting these people? Say, let us get out of our own problem. <coughs> just go to a mother there and just visit the people and give them something. You will be so surprised with the joy you will come home and feel how blessed you are to live in a comfortable home. There is electricity. There is this. There is that. There is hot water. And then you see people who don't have, fa who have family but they separate their bed like this. And they don't have nothing. Are you getting me? Yeah. You'll be appreciating your own life here. Yes. Are you getting me? Mm. When you live in a big house and you say, I don't want nobody to inconvenience me, then people only live in a small square room. Small square.